Monday mornings, in the house before eight o'clock, the house rises in peace. In the same hours on the same Monday, the house falls back into rest. The house breathes in daylight whilst it warms. It grunts with the air, but clunks and bumps and groans itself into forcing comfort through rigid capillaries should someone twist on a shower. The house is the heart beating red from room to room between beige-painted endocardic tissues. At 8.04 a.m. on a Monday morning in June, the right atrium floods with the poor and pumps down into a ventricle filled with only the best in modern comforts. A backlit vanity, a soft closed toilet, anything else is criminal. The heartworm is already here to greet you. Breathing faster, the poor become rich in offloading what remains of their wealth and flushing it out into a pulmonary corridor. Carried on through gasping bowels, the heartworm enters the chamber anew and in reverse. The left atrium enriches the heartworm, bathes it in the fresh and the new and the largest room awaits. The left ventricle is a spectacle, something to behold. Polypy chandeliers glistening gently with grim tallow candles and two ornate mitral doors swinging closed. The tour of rooms ends there, with the dripping out into a garden along paths that wind between bones. But the heartworm is a homebody, and he's very frightened to leave. The sinoatrial signals hum just right for him, peeling back the wallpaper, the stringy structures revealed. Heartworm makes a nook between strings and wraps himself inside. Here the wires live in their circuit boarding schools and keep the house running in order. The heartworm runs the wires wrong. In a shudder, a jolt, the heartworm feels a warbling quake in the walls of his home and the rooms begin to beat wrong. Heartworm is soon homeless, but I was a good host while I lasted. Thank you.